So following Susan's brilliant presentation of how American tax dollars are being used, and also amplifying really on her optimistic conclusions, we'll now be hearing from fellow Americans who are fighting the influence of the Israel lobby in this country and winning. Our first panel looks at cases that have been filed in US federal court, one here in Washington DC and the other in neighboring Maryland. I might begin by noting that while I am not related to our first panelist, I do, I do know how to spell and pronounce his last name, which one cannot take for granted in this country, as I can personally attest. Martin F. McMahon is a graduate of Fordham Law School in New York and an experienced litigator who has tried cases all over the country. He spent a number of years with the Securities Investor Protection Corporation, where he oversaw significant litigation matters in the Southern District of New York and in the Second Circuit. He has had private practice experience as well, having been with Kravis, Swain, and Moore, and with Proskauer, Rose, Getz, and Mendelssohn. He established his own law firm many years ago and is dedicated to advancing the interests of the proverbial underdog, in this case, Palestinians, whom the world has largely forgotten and deemed irrelevant. In fact, a decade ago, one of his Middle East clients implored him to do something to, quote, help the Palestinians, and he has been doing that. He um, filed a lawsuit, was, it was last year, or 2016? Yeah, well done. Yeah. Susan Abelhalo. Right, right. And now there's one that has just been, it was initially dismissed by the district court here in DC, but it was overturned, that dismissal was overturned by the, by the Court of Appeals here in DC. And that lawsuit seeks $1 billion in damages from those who enabled the settlements and the settlers to commit war crimes, including genocide, ethnic cleansing, and denationalization. $1 billion. A trillion, okay. So on February 19th of this year, the U.S. Court of Appeals ruled that these plaintiffs, represented by our speaker, could continue to pursue legal action to determine whether Israeli settlers are committing genocide. The court reasoned that, based on the UN Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, genocide has a legal rather than political definition, and all the other counts were dismissed as being political, not legal. So that means the court is going back, the case is going back to district court and there will be litigation on whether Israeli settlers are committing genocide, which is a huge breakthrough. So it's a pleasure to welcome Martin McMahon, who will describe for us the legal battle for justice against Israeli settlers and their American backers. Please join me in welcoming him. Thank you very much for your kind applause, and I must applaud Susan, wherever she is, for those great remarks. One time Elvis Presley was asked, what act do you not want to follow? And he said, Roy Orbison. And Susan is an act you should not have to follow. But I'll try to do my best to entertain you and educate you somewhat about legal stuff. Um, The one caveat, the opinions I express today, and forgive me, I'm too tired to stand up. The opinions I express today are my opinions, and I happen to be an Irishman. Uh, they are not the opinions of the entity that has sponsored this fantastic event. So uh, are there any APAC folks out there or retired uh, Mossad agents who can stand up and identify themselves? <laughs> I once uh, made that crack at a uh, convention, and I asked, would the FBI agents who have been monitoring my phones please stand up and identify themselves? So anyway, um, <laughs> it probably won't come as a surprise to you in the room if you know what I've been doing with respect to controversial lawsuits. Um, I have experienced slashed car tires insults, death threats, um, bar complaints, and other efforts to scare me off. Thank God I'm still here 
to give a speech or two. And again, <laughs> let me get to the lawsuit, which some of you may know nothing about. It's a pretty famous lawsuit, by the way. This is the first time, first time ever, that the political question doctrine has not barred a complaint by Palestinians. It is a landmark case, okay? We won, I mean, sorry, we lost in round one, it's like a heavyweight fight, at the district court level, but we won in the Court of Appeals, round two. Now we're going into round three, and I think I should educate you about, well, okay, Mr. McMahon, the case is in the Court of Appeals. What happens now? Where are we going, okay? So, if you can understand this, the defendants, represented by 30 of the best law firms in America, are understandably pissed off that they lost at the Court of Appeals. Hallelujah. But anyway, they want to file more motions to dismiss, which we'll eventually get to. But what will happen in the Court of Appeals after some um, skirmishing legal nonsense, uh, the case will eventually get down to district court where justice is dispensed and you have juries, you know? And uh, hopefully we'll get down there someday and then discovery a scheduling order will be entered by the judge who threw my case out, Judge Chutkin, and she will enter a scheduling order and that will say, you can start discovery, you can start doing this or that. Uh, one of the things I want is Defendant Adelson's last five years of tax returns. And I'll... <laughs> In my... In my next lawsuit, I'm suing Trump, and I want five years from him, too. <laughs> anyway, what Adelson has been doing, and taking tax write-offs, by the way, every April 15th, he takes tax deductions. You know why? He bought Kalashnikovs and body armor for these violent settlers in the OPT. He writes that off as a tax deduction. He has given $50 million to an illegal settlement named Ariel. And just like our Israeli ambassador, Mr. Friedman, by the way, he, he owns a settlement called Bidel. Every year, based on 990 tax forms, he sends them $2 million so that they have machine guns so they can maim and murder Palestinians. And by the way, guess where the Netanyahu family happens to live? Bidel, of all things. So we're going to go after the purveyors of hate arms traffickers like Adelson and other people, and we're going after 501c3s. You probably know about 501c3s not because of my lawsuit, but because of the big school tuition case. The whole thing that allowed that program to go forward was they set up a phony 501c3. I could, rich parents, send in $400,000 and get a tax write off, and my son gets into Harvard. So 501c3s here in America I, I don't think you understand this. Send two billion, with a B, every year to finance Israeli settlements and the Israeli army. Now that seems to violate 18 U.S. Code 1956 money laundering. It also violates 18 U.S. Code 960. You can't fund a foreign militia unit. But no one in the government wants to do anything about that. I, I wonder why that is, you know? And it's because of APAC and because of senators who APAC owns. Probably a lot of you know that if you want to get a piece of legislation on the floor, and I've been on Capitol Hill, the way to do it is to get to know and suck up to Senator McConnell. Of course, he doesn't like certain things like gun control, you know, legislation. So if it doesn't come to the floor, no one votes on it. So uh, I don't know whether there's any hope for us in Congress. In any case, uh, that lawsuit is going to be historic, and I think we will finally identify who the folks are who are funding hate in the OPT. Now, I mention hatred because two things have occurred, and my daughter was very concerned about this. Fifty Muslim brothers and sisters were murdered in New Zealand, right, by some nut job. The other reason I want to discuss hatred is we unfortunately have a president 
who has the racial insensitivity of a doorknob. Per perhaps I'm insulting doorknobs. Um, anyway, <laughs> I, I get a kick out of this, but I, uh, I, thought, I thought maybe we can focus on hatred. Why do soldiers, why do settlers hate Palestinians so much? Um, a lot of reasons are identified in this fantastic book, A Jewish Woman in Palestine. For example, I think it was page 15. Some uh, soldier has a Glock pistol on a kid's head, a Palestinian kid, and he says, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. The reason I'm doing this and the reason I want you dead is you're a Palestinian. So it's stuff like that, and you hear these comments from Netanyahu and his boys. Palestinians are carcinogen agents. They are not human beings. They're savages. They're beasts. The kids are snakes. That's evidence of a genocidal intent, by the way. And it's something we're going to put together in our next lawsuit as well. Now, um, I would like to, first of all, on the concept of hatred, I will get to it, but address some of the young people in this audience. If you saw what went on in Char uh, Charlottesville, 2016 or 17, that was a reenactment of Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht occurred in one of my favorite German cities, München, 1933. Those brown shirts were out there carrying torches, just like the assholes in Charlottesville. They weren't screaming, the Jews won't replace us, but they were demanding eradication of the Jewish race. And one of Trump's prototypes, named Adolf Hitler, accommodated them. So I want you to know about Charlottesville and that it wasn't an accident. And the good people there that Trump refers to, nonsense. They're Nazis. Second lesson I have for young people, I'm old and I'm on my way out. I'm sort of like chopped liver. Um, <laughs> President Trump's daily spewing forth of hatred is nothing new. I worked with uh, the Kennedy family. I have fond memories of, of Bobby and his speechwriters. I have an autographed picture of JFK in my house. Bobby said many years ago, more and more Americans are turning to violence. Violence is going to destroy our great country, he warned. Americans are becoming increasingly tolerant of violence, which is not something we should encourage. When society, like the asshole in the White House, tries to teach people to hate one another, the possibility for violent confrontation increases. See Charlottesville as exhibit number one. Anyway, got to get back to my notes. Uh, hatred is not something that you grew up with. You're not born with a DNA um, entry on hatred. It's taught. I'm going to give you some remarks, and you can judge from that why it's being taught to young settlers and why we have so much violence in the OPT. I don't know if you know who Shin Bet is. It's the Jewish intelligence folks. Their officials have now confirmed what I thought was always true. Settlers have actually prepared, based upon uh, experience from IDF soldiers, they now have a how to do it manual. In other words, if you want to burn down a Palestinian home, this is the way to do it, you know? Arson for dummies. So um, that's hard to believe, but literally, it's not a hypothetical exercise. You know why? The Dewapshi family 20 months ago, husband, a mother, father, 18 month infant, burned down in car, in, what is the word? Incinerated. Incinerated, thank you. So it's an idle, uh, not an idle exercise and it's just gonna happen more and more and these young settlers are taught hate. There's a rabbi in Hebron. I think his name is Melamud, another rabbi, Elor in uh, uh, Hebron. You know what they tell these kids? Biblical scriptures allow you to murder Palestinians, you know? So what do they do? And they go out and murder Palestinians. Not only that, one of those kooky rabbis, uh, Ariel, I think his name is, he said 10,000 Arab lives are not worth a single fingernail of an Israeli soldier. Can you imagine that? Sounds like genocide to me. 
Yadatin Shapiro is a guy I want to get to know. He's a senior Air Force pilot. He believed he stopped dropping uh, bombs, cluster bombs, in Gaza because it was a war crime. He wrote the pilot's letter, and it's wonderful. This is a war crime, the ongoing slaughter of innocent people. The quote is taken from a dedicated, fantastic journalist, Robert Hirschfeld, a Pulitzer Prize winner. General Daniel Halutz rebuked him. This is wonderful. Don't you know that Jewish actions must be evaluated from the perspective of Jewish superiority to the Arab, moral and otherwise? How about ethnic cleansing? Further evidence of this superiority mentality is a statement made by Chaim Weissman. I mean, I didn't pronounce that correctly. But he headed up the Western Europe um, Zionist movement. And he was trying to make, uh, he was corresponding with British landlord, British diplomat, Lord Balford. He recommended that make Palestine as Jewish as England is English. One disgusting racist remark, Arabs, you see, are oriental, therefore less human and valuable than Europeans and Zionists. They are treacherous, unregenerate. Most of all, they do not deserve to own a country, even if their Palestinian numerical advantage seems otherwise to entitle them to that. Lord Balfour knew what he was doing when he gave Palestine to Israel. Israel's first president, Ben-Gurion, was even more candid. We must expel all Arabs and take their places when we have military force at our disposal. Mr. Weitzman pointed out to a Soviet ambassador, if half a million Arabs could be transferred out of Palestine, two million Jews could be put in their place. And that would be the first installment. Now, these settlers, you've got to understand, are evil. There's a, somebody I know I've got to interview someday, Mr. Shulman. He's a Jew and he helps out Palestinians who have been threatened. Goes into their villages and everything, and these crazy settlers attack him, beat him up twice. And they said to him, what the hell are you doing here? And he says, I'm a Jew, that's why I'm here. This is not right. Martin, if I can interrupt you just a second before we get to our next speaker. When I was reading the Court of Appeals opinion, they mentioned that you, your case is not suing Israeli soldiers, but civilian settlers. And that was one reason it was allowed to proceed. So I think that's a very interesting yeah. legal distinction. Kudos for a careful attorney. We survived in the support of Court of Appeals. So I think I'm going to have to introduce our next speaker on this sure. panel, if that's OK. And thank could you I, very much. Could I give one last conclusion? Yes, absolutely. OK, young people out there wherever this is. Yeah, I think I lost it. But uh, one thing I wanted to say is that when uh, racial hatred rears its ugly head, young people in the audience crush that, crush that emphatically with demonstrations and denunciations and make sure people know what it's all about. And the lesson is, when they came for the refugees who had illegally entered my country, uh, I didn't do anything. When they came for the Jews, I wasn't wearing a yellow star. When they came for the uh, communists, I was not concerned because I'm not a Bolshevik. However, when they came for me, there was no one left to protect me. Thanks for your time and attention. See you later at the table of the cocktail hour. Let me now turn this over to Saqib Ali, uh, somebody who had the nerve to actually file a lawsuit in Maryland.